Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. In this video, we'll solve some percentage problems, sort of percentage problems that you will encounter if you're preparing for GMAT or GRE or SAT or SAT or HESI or TEs. If you're preparing for any of these tests on these exams, one encounters percentage problems on a regular basis. And those are the sort of percentage problems we'll solve in this video. It will help you improve your math skill. It will help you better prepare for any one of these tests that you're preparing for. Let's get going. Let's start with very basic concept first. What does the word percent mean? The word percent. What does the word percent mean? The word percent means exactly what it says. It means per 100. Cent, that's where the word century comes from. Per 100. Out of 100. Out of 100. So if one talks about 47%, 47% expressed as a fraction simply means 47 out of 100. If we, if we talk about 0.9%, well that's simply 0.9 out of 100. 0.9%. If the problem talks about 287%, but 287% expressed as a fraction simply means 287 out of 100 and so on and so forth. The second thing we have to understand is the formula. The basic formula, the percentage formula that we'll encounter that we'll have to use over and over again anytime we solve any percentage problem and that goes something like this. Whenever we want to figure out the percentage change for, for a given number, if a uh, number changes either goes up or down, if it rises the value goes up or falls and we are being asked to figure out the percentage change. The percentage change is simply the new number minus the old number. We ask ourselves what is it now compared to what it used to be? And we divide it by, see so this is the change. The new number minus the old number, that's the change. And this change, we ask ourselves, we change. We, this delta represents the change. So the change divided by, we ask ourselves, it has changed by this much amount, whatever the amount it has changed. Let's look, let's look, let's look at a, let's look at an example. Let's say for example, let's look at the first example here. Let's say that we are told, we are told that the price of an item, a price of an item, goes up from $140 to one hundred and eighty two dollars what is the what is the percentage increase what is the percentage increase so percentage increase percentage change here is simply the change that we have but the question is change compared to what we know how much it has changed it has changed this much amount from 140 to 182 it has changed this much compared to what the answer always is compared to what and the answer to that question always is compared to what it used to be, not compared to what it is now. Nobody says how much has it changed compared to what it is now. That makes no sense. How much has it changed compared to what it used to be? Well, what it used to be is the old number, the number that we start out with. So we divide, we take our change and we divide it by the old number. We divide it by the old number and then times 100. This times 100, if, if you want to do it, that's fine. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. If we don't multiply by 100, then what we'll have, the answer that we'll have will be in the form of decimals as opposed to a, a percentage. So anyway, let's, let's do the change here. So the new number, which is 182 minus 140, which is the old number, divided by the old number, times 100. 182 minus 140, that's 42. 42 divided by 140, 100. Notice that it is a positive quantity. 182 minus 140 is a positive quantity. Positive quantity tells us that it has gone up. It percentage change is going to be a positive number. It percentage change is going to be a positive number because it has gone up in the value. Had it been the other way around, had we gone the other direction, this quantity would have been negative. You understand? So let's, let's simplify this thing. Enough of the talk. Let's simplify this thing. This is 140. We see 140 at the bottom. We see 100 on the top there. Divide top and bottom by 10. If we divide top and bottom by 10, the zero goes out. Now we have 14 on the bottom, we have 42 on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. If we divide top and bottom by 2, 4 has 2 2's, 2 has 1 2, that becomes 21 and 14 becomes 7. 
Again, we see 7, we see 21. Are you able to see the 7 and 21? 21 is multiple of 7. It goes 3 times. So it's 3 times 10. The answer is it has changed by 30%. It has gone up by 30%. Which makes sense, which makes sense because, where, where can we do this thing? Just do it up here. Because the original price was 140. 10%, 10 percent, 10 percent of 140, 10 percent of 140 is 14, obviously. Therefore 30 percent, therefore 30 percent, which is what we're claiming here, the 30 percent would be 3 times as much, and 3 times 14 is 42, which is exactly what we found the change to be. We found the change was 42 and since 14 is 10 percent of 140 therefore 42 which is three times the amount must be 30 percent makes perfect sense let's do one more let's do one more tom's weekly salary goes up from 300 to 350. What is the approximate percentage change? Don't ask me, don't ask me why I put the word approximate in the capital letter, it just happened, it wasn't by design. But what you have to understand is that in a question like this, of course the answer choices are laid out in front of you in multiple choice, these, these, these are multiple choice exams, so the answer choices are laid out, they are A, B, C, D, E, and they are going to be all whole numbers. But what we have to understand here is that they are looking for approximate percentage change, not the exact change. You have to keep that in mind. So let's do that. So again, the percentage change is going to be the change, we are going from 300 to 350, that's the change of 50, divided by the original number, the number that we started out with, which is the old number which is 300 times 100 times 100 let's divide top and bottom by 100 so the two zeros are going to drop out and what we're left with is 50 divided by 3 50 divided by 3 as you can see 50 divided by 3 50, 50 is not a multiple of 3 so it's not going to be a whole number but as you look at the answer choices they are all whole numbers because they're looking for approximate change so we have to do something with it Let's convert this 50, let's pretend that this 50 is actually, let's convert this 50 into 51. Let's pretend that this 50 is 51. Why? Because 51, if you look at the digits here, 5 and a 1, the sum of the digits, listen carefully, listen very carefully, sum of the digits of 51 is 5 and 1, 5 plus 1 is 6. And we learned long time ago, we learned long time ago, that as long as the sum of the digits, S-U-M sum, of the digits of a given number is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. 5 plus 1 is 6, 6, since 6 is divisible by 3, 51 is divisible by 3. This is going to give us a whole number. Let's divide 51, let's divide 51 by 3 over here so that we have more room. So why did we convert it into 51? Because 51 we know is divisible by 3, because we have a 5, if you can get one more, 5 plus 1 is 6 and 6 is divisible by 3. We could have gone the other way by 48, and 48 would still would have been divisible by 3, but that would have been silly. We want to get as close to, we want to get to as close to a real number as possible. So approximately 50, 50 is approximately 51. How many threes does 5 have? 5 has 1 3. 5 has 1 3. The remaining 2 from the 5, the remaining 2 from the 5 goes to 2 and becomes 21. And 21 has 7 threes. Follow. So the answer is. What was the perc approximate percentage change? The answer is it is it has changed approximately by 17 percent. By 17 percent. Before I completely forget it, I'm going to make a note here, something before somewhere before 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 I go to the next problem. We learned long time ago, and I'm going to tell you in a second where. Divisibility rules in our basic math series on day 25. Basic math, just type in basic math day 25 in our basic math series. There are 200 videos in it. 
On day number 25, we learned this divisibility rule, how to recognize, how to recognize if a number is divisible by 3. And the answer is, as long as the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, the number itself is divisible by 3, which is why we approximated 50 to 51. Let's do the next problem. Number 3. Number 3. Mike's weight goes down from 140 pounds to 133 pounds. What is the percentage decrease? As you can see, it is decreasing, it is going down, percentage decrease. So again, percentage change we know is the new number new number in this case is 133 because it goes from 140 to 133 so the new number is 133 minus the old number which is 140 as you can see it's going to give us a negative quantity 133 minus 140 is going to give us a negative quantity and the negative quantity tells us that it is going down over the original number the number that we started out with his original weight was 140 times 100 133 minus 140 gives us a negative 7 over 140 times 100. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. If we divide top and bottom by 10, the 0 is going to go away. Let's divide top and bottom by 7. 7 goes away and 14 becomes 2. And divide top and bottom by 2 again. 2 goes away and 10 becomes 5. And don't forget we have a negative here. Negative 5. Negative 5. Mike's weight has gone down by 5%. His weight has gone down, his weight has dropped by 5%, which if you think about it for a second, makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense because his original weight was 140. His original weight was 140. 10%, 10% of 140, let's do it someplace where we have more room. Where, we can, we, where can we do it? Let's do it right here. We can erase all this thing. So what we are claiming is that his weight has gone down by 5%. Don't put a percentage sign here. This percentage sign is already here. It's 5, negative 5%. Which makes perfect sense because his original weight was 140 and we know that 10%, 10 of 140 is 14. Well, if 10% of 140 is 14, that it stands to reason that implies that 5% must equal 7, half, of his, half as much, which is exactly what it is. His weight went down by seven seven pounds. His weight, his, weight, his weight went down by seven pound and since 14 pound represents 10% of the original quantity, since 14 pound represents 10%, it stands to reason that seven must represent 5%, which is exactly what we're claiming, that his weight went down by 5%. Let's do one more. Number four. Let's erase all of this thing, we don't need any of this. Price of a stock valued at $30. Price of a stock which was originally valued at $30, we are told, goes up by 25% and then it goes up by 25% and then the next day it drops by 20%. Question simply is what is the final price? What is the final price of a stock? If it started out at $30 then we are told that today the value went up by 25% and the following day it dropped by 20%. Let's find out, shall we? So, first it went up by 25%. So we had to figure out what is 25% of 30. We started out with 30, 25% of 30, 25% of 30 is simply, is simply one quarter of 30. 25% of anything is simply one quarter. One quarter and off means times. It's just one quarter of 30. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 
4 will become 2 and 30 will become 15. Let's divide by top and bottom by 2 again and 2 will go away and 15 will become 7.5. So in other words, a quarter of 30, a quarter of 30 is 7 and a half. We started out with we started out with the price of 30. So we started out with the price of 30 and it goes up by 7.5 dollars. The new price at the end of the day today was 37 and a half dollars. Then we are told that it drops by 20%. It drops by 20%. So instead of writing it like this, I'm gonna write this in, in decimals so it is easier to see. That's what it is. 10% of this amount, 10% is 10% of this is 37.50, 10% is $3.75. If you take away another 10%, that's going to be another $3.75. This represents the 20%. $3.75 represents 10%. Another 10% will be $3.75. This is $1.50 this is $6.750. And this is $6. This is it drops by $7.50. 20% represents 20% of this amount represents $7.50. It draws by that much amount. And what are we left with? It turns out at the end, we are left with whatever we started out with. We started out with the price of $30, and we are back to $30. We could do all of this thing, what we just did here, but the concept that they're trying to see here, the concept that they're trying to test here to see if you understand it right away, is the fact that if you start out, let's say $100, don't do it. In a problem like this, don't do it with the $30, don't mess with $30, make up your own number, let's start out with 30, uh, let's start out with 100. If you start out with 100, if you start out with 100, it goes up by 25%, it becomes 125, that's an increase of, increase of 25%, increase of 25%. From 100 to 125 is an increase of 25%. Then it draws by 20%. 20%, 20% of anything, 20% is the fifth of something. 20% is the fifth of something. 10% is a tenth. 20% is the fifth. What's the fifth of this amount? Fifth of 125. One fifth of 125. We have to divide top and bottom by five. Just let's do it here. 125 over five is what we're looking at. A fifth of a fifth of 125 is simply 125 over five. How many five does one have? One has no fives. That one goes and joins us. Two becomes twelve. How many five does twelve have? Twelve has two fives. The remaining two goes and joins the five. The remaining two goes and joins the fives and becomes twenty-five. And twenty-five has five fives. Which makes perfect sense because one hundred and twenty-five is made up of five twenty-fives. If you have five quarters, one quarter, two quarters, two quarters is fifty cents, three quarters seventy-five cents, four quarters will make a dollar. And five quarters will give you dollar twenty-five, and therefore a fifth of one twenty-five is twenty-five. So it drops by twenty percent. It rises first. It rises by twenty-five percent. It becomes one twenty-five. Then it drops by twenty percent. Twenty percent of one twenty-five we just found out is twenty twenty-five. So it drops by twenty-five. It drops by twenty-five, which represents twenty percent of one twenty-five, and we are back to one hundred what we started out with. An increase of 25% and then a drop of 20% will take you to exactly where we started out with. So if your problem is dealing with something like this where they're giving you two percentage changes, don't deal with the number that they give you, just start, just, just work with 100, that's the trick. Just deal with 100 and then we'll worry about it at the end what happens. Do you understand? We'll do one more problem like this in a second. Let's do the next one, something different. This was problem number four. Let's move on to five. Let's move on to five. Question is seven and one third percent of six hundred of of six hundred is what? Seven and one seven and one third percent of six hundred is what? As you can see, we are moving away from the per percentage formula here because this one doesn't require percentage problem. There is there is no there is no quantity that is being changed here. We are not told that certain quantity goes from this amount to that amount. We are just given one quantity, and we're simply being asked to calculate a given percentage of that quantity, seven and one third percent to be precise. The trick here, the trick here is that don't try to figure out seven and one third percent in one shot. 
take your seven and one third percent, whatever they, they give you, whether they tell you six and a half percent or four and three quarter percent or five and one one fifth percent, whatever they tell you, take that and break it up to two parts. Seven percent and a third of a percent. We know we're dealing with 600, we know 1% of 600 is 6. Or if you like, I can write the whole thing if you want. 1% of 600, because that's what we're dealing with. 1% of 600 is 6. Everybody knows that. 1% of 600 is 6. We're not interested in 1%. We want 7%. But well, that's very easy. Take the amount and multiply it by 7. If you can multiply this number by this side by 7, we have to do the same thing here. So if 1% is 6, 7% 7, 7 must be 6 times 7, which is 42. That part is done. Now we move on to this part. Again, 1% of 600 we know is 6. If 1% is 6, then it stands to reason that a third of a percent, a third of a percent, must be third of that amount. A third of that amount. In other words, in other words, take this quantity that is given to us, take this quantity that is given to us, and divide both sides by 3. If 1% is 6, then one third of a percent must be 2. That's it, we are done. The question was, how much is 7 and one third percent of 600? The answer is 7 and, seven and one third percent of 600 is 42 plus 2. Is equal to 42 plus 2 or 44. The answer is 44 represents 7 and one third percent of 600. Let's move on, number 6. What is, what percentage, what percentage of 35 is 7? Again, we can solve this thing in a, in a geeky way, in a nerdy way, in a classical way, in a conventional way, in an orthodox way, in an academic way. Or we can do it in a quick and dirty way. Let's first do the orthodox way, the classical way, the nerdy way first. The classical way means we have to set it up as an equation. In a classical way, in an algebraic way, we have to set it up as an equation. So let's do that. What is our unknown? Let's represent our unknown by x. That's the tradition. Percent means over 100. Of means times. 35. Is means equals. 7. There is the equation. We want the x by itself. We want the x by itself to multiply both sides by 100. 100 will drop out. Again, we, want, we have 35 here. Divide both sides by 35. And 35 will drop out and we are left by x by itself. So x equals 7 times 100 over 35. We see 35, we see 7. Let's divide top and bottom by 7. 7 fives are 35, not 7 7. 7 fives are 35. We see a 5 at the bottom. We see 100 on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. And 5 10 has two fives and zero has no fives. So the answer is 20. So here we whatever we see the wherever we see the what part, what part was the unknown part, we replace that by what we are claiming. We are claiming that that's what represents 20. So what we are saying, what we are saying is that, what we are claiming is that 20% of 35 is 7. 20% of 35 is 7, which makes sense. We didn't have to do any of this mumbo jumbo. We didn't have to do any of this mumbo jumbo if we were able to see. If we were able to see right away that 7, 7 is simply, is simply a fifth of 35. And fifth, a fifth of anything, a fifth of anything, fifth of any number is simply 20%. So the question was, what percentage of 35 is 7? It's a very awkward way of asking the question. But that's, but that's exactly what it is. What percentage of 35 is 7? The answer is 20% of 35 is 7 because 20% of 35 is the fifth of 35 and the fifth of 35 is the 7, which makes perfect sense. Number 7. Number 7. A house is valued at $160,000, $160,000.
next year the property value rises by 20%. The following year the following year its value drops by 25%. Question is what is the what is the final value of a house if originally it was worth $160,000 then the price goes up by 20% and the following year it drops by 25%. Let's do it, shall we? Let's do it here. So we started out with 160 and we are told that it rises by 20%. It rises by 20%. We know 10% of 160 is 16. Another 10% would be another 16. We add them all up, we get 2, carry 1, 9. There you go. This represents the rise of 20%. This amount represents the 20%. So now the price is 192. Then what happens? Then we are told that it drops by 25%. 192 drops by 25%. And that's the final price. So we have to figure out a drop of 25% of this amount. 25% is a quarter. So it drops by a quarter. So we have 192. If it drops by 25%, that's one quarter. One quarter of this amount would represent the drop of 25%. So we will figure out this amount and subtract it from 192 and that will be our final price. Let's figure out what 192 divided by 4 is. How many 4 does 1 have? 1 has no 4. 1 has no 4. That 1 goes and joins the 9 and becomes 19. That 1 goes, that 1 goes and joins the 9 and becomes 19. How many 4s does 19 have? 19 has 4 4s. 4 4s four are 16. 19 has 4 4 4s. 4 4 is a 16. Once we take away 16 from the 19, once we take away 16 from the 19, we have a remaining a remainder of 3. That 3 goes and joins the 2 and becomes 32. And 32 has 8 4s. 8 4, which makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense that 192 is made up of 48 4s. 192 is made up of 48 4s. It makes perfect sense because if we think about it, 192 plus a 4 plus a 4 is 200 and 200 we know is made up of 50 fours. 200 is made up of 50 fours. since 250 50 fours are 200 this is what this is what I'm saying here 50 fours are 200 that's how we speak if, if 50 fours are 200 and then 192 which has Two fewer fours, 192 therefore must be made up of 48 fours. Anyway, so drop was 48. So let's subtract 48 from here. 48 represents the 25% drop of one quarter drop. Drop of one quarter of the value. 12, 12 minus 8 is 4. This becomes 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. And the answer is the final value of the house is $144. $144 is the final value. What I, but what I want you to get out of this thing, but I, what I want you to get out of this thing is, I hope that you were able to make the connection right away, is, is, is to realize that this problem is the exact same problem, exact same concept, exact same, exact same notion as problem number four that we just did. And in the problem number four, we said to ourselves that if we are given two or three different percentage drops, percentage changes rather, doesn't have to be drop, if the problem gives us two or three percent changes, don't deal with the number that they gave you. Don't deal with 160. Make up 100. Let make up one value of 100 to begin with. Do your calculation and then worry about what the final price is going to be. Let's do it that way. Shall we? I'll show you. I'll show you how how much faster it will go if instead of 160 had we begin had we begun with 100. Let's do it again with the 100. So if we pretend that the initial value is 100. Then we are told that it rises by 20%. If it rises by 20%, it becomes 120. This is a rise of 20%. Rise of 20%. Then we are told that it drops by 25%. It drops by 
25% is a quarter of this amount. A quarter of 120. How much is a quarter of 120? I don't know. Half of 120 I know is 60. Half of 120 is 60 and therefore quarter must be 30. So if you take away 30 from it, that represents a quarter of 120, which is 25%. If you take away 30 from it, we are left with 90. But this 90 is not a dollar amount. It's, it's not, not a dollar amount. We did not start out with a dollar amount. We started out with 100%. That 100 represents the original value. 100% of the original value. So this word that we just did here, it tells us that we, are, that we will be left at the end, it tells us that at the end we will be left with 90% of the original value. Original value was 160. So all we have to do now is take our original value, 160, and we, since we want 90%, take away 10%. Take away 10% from it. And that will represent the 90%. 10 minus 6 is 4, and this becomes 5, 5 minus 1 is 4, turns out that 144 represents 90%, which is exactly what we found here, which is exactly what we found there. So we can do it this method, working with the actual number that they give you, but sometimes the number that they give you are very large numbers that require a lot of calculations. In that case, it's a smart idea to substitute 100. Whatever the original value is, treat that as 100% of the amount, obviously, and do your work and see what happens at the end. And it, after doing all the work, if it turns out that at the end you're left with 70%, then you simply have to figure out what is the 30% of that amount and subtract it from the original amount and you're done in one step. Do you understand? Let's do one more. Number eight. Number eight. Forty-five. 45 is 25 percent of what? Again, we can solve it in a geeky way, in a nerdy way, in a classical way, in an orthodox way, in, a, in, a, in an algebraic way, or we can uh, solve it logically, rationally, intuitively. Let's do the geeky way first, shall we? So geeky way requires that we set, up, set, set this up as an equation. 45 is means equal. 25 percent means over 100. Of means times, and what is our unknown, which we're going to represent with x. We want the x by itself, so let's multiply both sides by 100 over 25, 100 over 25. So we have 100 at the bottom, we have 100 on the top, goes away. We have 25 at the bottom, and 25 on the top, it goes away. And we are left with 100 by itself. So one, rather, we are left with x by itself. So therefore, x equals 100, right here, 100 over 25 times 45 and you will see you will see very quickly that I have turned it into a freak show the problem is not that complicated it should not it should not have been done the problem should not have been done in this manner this is this is this is turning to this is turning to a veritable freak show in the next video in the next video I'll tell you which day we learned about veritable in our vocabulary lessons, I don't know, I don't have the thing in front of me. It is turned into a veritable freak show, as you can see here. 100 divided by 25, let's divide top and bottom by 25, 25, 100 has 425, so it's 4 times 45. The answer is 4 times 45. I know 2 times 45 is 90. If you double 45, it's 90, and if you double 90, it's 180. If you have to multiply something by 4, just double the amount and then double, it, double the result one more time. So if you double 45, double of 45 is 90, and then double it again, you get 190. If you have to figure out a quarter of something, just cut it in half, and then cut it, cut it in half again. So answer is 180. But we didn't have to do all of this. Thing. The question was, 45 is 25% of what? 45 is 25% of what? But 25% is one quarter. So the question is, 45 is one quarter of what? Of course, 45 is one quarter of what? 45 is, 45 is one quarter of 45 times 4. 45 is one quarter. 45 is one quarter of, of what? 45, 45 is one quarter of 45 times 4, of course. How do I know it's one quarter of 45 times 4? Because I'm multiplying it by 4. So if I take a one quarter of this amount, there will be 45, of course which is exactly what we found here, 4 times 45.
number nine. I'm going to rewrite this thing so that we don't forget it next time. And here is the next vocab word. Let's do the penultimate problem, number nine. Penultimate is another vocab word we learn in our vocabulary lesson. I'll tell you, I'll tell you which day we learn this word next time in the next video. As I told you I don't have the list in front of me right now. Penultimate is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last, number nine. 8.5 is what percent of 1700? Question is 8.5 is what percent of 1700? Let's see what we can do here. 8.5 is means equal. What means what is our unknown? Percent means over 100. Of means times and then 1700. Let's divide top and bottom by 100. If we divide top and bottom by 100, 100 goes away and this becomes 17. So what we end up is 17x equals 8.5 and therefore x equals 8.5 over 17. And how much is that? Well, we have to understand that 8 times 2, if you multiply 8 by 2, it's 16. 16 is 2 times 8 and therefore 8 and a half times 2 is 17. 8 and a half is exactly 2 times 17. So if you divide top and bottom by 8 and a half, you're going to get half. This is what we're claiming x is equal to. This is what we're claiming x is equal to. We go back to our original problem and where we see the word what, this was the unknown quantity. Where we see the word what, we're going to replace it with what we're claiming it to be. This is the what part. This is the what part. This is the unknown. So we substitute, substitute here. So what we are claiming, what we are claiming is that eight and a half is half a percent of seventeen hundred. Eight and a half is half a percent of seventeen hundred. The question is, will you be able to provide me a cogent, intuitive explanation as to why that is true? Here's another vocab word. Cogent. Again, I'll tell you in the next video when we learned it, in our vocabulary videos. Can you provide me a cogent, persuasive, persuasive explanation as to why 8.5 should be exactly half a percent of 1700? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. Because that's what we're claiming. I need the room. I need a lot of room, so we have to, I'm going to have to erase this thing. Why don't we erase this part right here, this step right here? 1700 is what we're dealing with. What we have to understand is that 1% 1% of 1700, I hope you are able to see that 1% of 1700 is 17, which is probably why it's called 1700. 1% 1 of 100 is 1, 1% 1 of 400 is 4, 1% 1 of 3500 is 35, therefore 1% 1 of 1700 is 17. If 1% 1 is 17, then half a percent, if you were to take, divide this quantity by 2, must be half of that amount. 17 over 2, which is exactly what we had here, right here, 17 over 2, or rather, 17 over 2 is 8 and a half, that's what I meant to say. 17 over 2, 17 divided by 2 is 8 and a half. So one more time, we are trying to understand why seven, why 8.5 should be half a percent of 1700, and the reason is because 1% 1 of 1700 is 17, and therefore half of that amount, which is 8.5, must represent half a percent. Because if 1% one is 17, then half a percent must be half of 17, 8 and a half. So this statement makes perfect sense. This statement makes perfect sense. 8 and a half is in fact half a percent of 1700. Our answer must be correct because it makes logical sense. Let's do the very last problem. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10 is asking us 30% of 25 is what? Again, we can set it up in a geeky way or we can solve it intuitively. Let's, let's do the algebraic way first. 30% means one over 100, of means times, 25 is means equals, and this is our unknown. That's our equation. 
Let's divide top and bottom by 25 because this is just 25 over 1. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. 25 is going to go away and 100 becomes 4. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 4 will become 2 and 13 will, 30 will become 15. Let's divide top and bottom by 2 one more time and 15 divided by 2 is going to be 7 and a half. 15 divided by 2. If you divide, if you divide 15 by 2, Fifteen has fifteen has seven twos, seven twos are fourteen. Seven twos are fourteen. Once we take away fourteen from the fifteen, we have a remainder of one. We have a remainder of one, and that one must be divided by two. Seven and a half. So what we're claiming here, what we're claiming here is that so again, seven and a half is our final answer. We replace this thing in the word part. And see and see if it makes sense. See if it makes sense. What we are claiming is that 30% of 25, 30% of 25 is 7.5. Let's see if it makes sense. Let's, let's see if it makes sense. I need the room. Let's see if it makes sense. Let's put the 2 here. We know 10%. We 10% know of 25. 10% of 25 is 2.5. You just move the decimal. You just move the decimal from here to here. It becomes 2.5, which is which can be written as two and a half. If 10% is two and a half, then 30%, 30% must be three times as much. All we have to figure out is what is three times two and a half? What is three times two and a half? Let's find out, shall we? It better be it better be seven and a half. Three times two is six. Three times two is six. And 3 times half, 3 times half is 3 halves. Again, 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times half is 3 halves, and 3 halves is just 1 and a half. 1 and a half plus 6 is 7 and a half. So it makes perfect sense. That was the end of it. That was the end of it. We're going to do 10 more problems in the next video, and then 10 more. There are altogether 30 problems that I have that I want to solve dealing with percentage problems and we will be going to keep making videos on different topics we'll make uh, we'll, have, we'll have videos on ratios and proportions we will learn how to solve uh, inequalities we'll so, so learn how to solve absolute value inequalities we'll learn how to solve uh, lin linear equations uh, all sorts of things some geometry some algebra all sorts of all sorts of concepts and, and notions and and uh, problems that you might encounter in any of these tests, any one of these tests that you might be preparing for, whether you're preparing for GRE or GMAT or SAT or ACT or T's or HESI's, uh, they will all be there gradually. I'll, I'll keep making them. And also some videos perhaps on vocabularies and so forth. Okay? Bye now.